Mason. I'm the Fernando Trauma Lead from Liverpool University Hospitals. And I also work with the University of Liverpool. Case three is a 43 year old male publican and tripped over a step, an inversion injury to the left ankle, uh, seen in the accident emergency and put into a back slab. The accident emergency records report that it was uh, diffusely swollen and painful medially. So no fractures are seen around the ankle on the x-ray. These are the x-rays that you have. Now, we asked how would you proceed in clinic, and the majority said that they would take the uh, back slab off and examine the low limb before plant imaging. Uh, this is uh, perfectly reasonable. However, we do know that the medial side is tender because the ED notes said. And so also leaving the back slab and re-image uh, is also um, appropriate. If you were to get further imaging, what would you go for? So you got weight bearing views, including full length tibia, is the majority of the case. And this what was done weight bearing radiographs to show a opening the medial clear space, opening the syndesmosis, and we now know that we have a high fibula fracture. This paper, which was uh, published uh, this year, uh, showing the stability and ankle fracture diagnosis and treatment. Shakalari is the one who has been promoting this uh, differentiation from Lauk Hansen to 4A and 4B, and this was discussed in uh, JIT's webinar. But as you can see, if you have an unstable on non weight bearing and weight bearing radiographs, the PTTL is ruptured, and then we're looking at fixation. So for this case, we know that the medial structures are uh, injured because we have medial clear space opening and the syndesmosis is also ruptured. So the paper that I published earlier this year on ankle fracture stability, if we look at the different uh, movements that the ankle has, the x-axis translation, y-axis translation, x-axis rotation, and z-axis rotation, I explained that the posterior malleolus fracture was uh, involved with the translation and z-axis rotation. However, for this case, you can see that we light up every box. So all movements are unstable. So what do we do now? So most people pitched for this, the syndesmotic screw plus or minus medial pay, which is more than reasonable. Although 20% did say suture button. Now, there are some concerns with this one. So we know the, uh, the RCT that was uh, published this year uh, did show significant improvement, functional scores, and osteoarthritis using the suture button as compared to a screw. But for this, the fibula length had been restored and they actually stable as they had plated the fibula. So the questions you need to ask yourself, is the fibula length and rotation restored? If it is not, then this needs to be restored. If the fibula length is, ex uh, is actually stable, i.e. that you have fixed the fracture and therefore it cannot shorten, uh, if it does not, then suture buttons will not be of use because the suture buttons don't still allow axial movement of the fibula. And the next is the fibula uh, position in the mortis and in its incisura confirmed. If not, then you need to position it there. Then either a suture button or a screw. So to labor this point, for example, this is the posterior malleolar fracture with a mason nerve fracture. We have opening the syndesmosis. So by fixing the posterior malleolar fracture, you've achieved fibula length, and you've also achieved some element of posterior stability, but it may still have rotational instability anteriorly, and you've stopped it shortening because the ligaments are still attached to this fragment. Therefore, use of a suture button is uh, useful because it controls rotation. So for this case, where we have uh, an inability to plate the uh, proximal fibula due to the overlying coronal nerve. Uh, we can uh, achieve length by keeping the talus in the right position and uh, reducing the syndesmosis in the syndesmosis. So for this case, uh, I have used a screw to control its axial um, uh, stability. And then I've used uh, the addition of a, a suture button to control rotation. Just a comment on the medial side, now this was covered quite extensively with JIT's talk, but 
for this case, as you can see, you've got a, a medial clear space opening, a deltoid ligament injury, uh, plus a fibular fracture, plus or minus syndesmosis. The syndesmosis was actually gone on this. As you can see, we have achieved the fibula length and the axial stability as the fibula has been fixed. But when we do external rotation test, we can see there's opening the syndesmosis and the medial clear space. With fixation of the syndesmosis with a, a syndesmotic screw in this case, you now see on external rotation test, the syndesmosis does not open. Minimal opening of the medial clear space, but you have, if you just watch this calcaneum in comparison to this line, you can see it moves over a centimeter as we have subtalar instability. So if you have a case such as this and you expect to walk them in a boot after you've fixed uh, the ankle and you've not repaired the medial ligaments, then there is some concern that the foot will flatten. After the delta has been repaired, we now have, it's now uh, back into its normal position. And so the superficial delta repair, just one anchor within the, um, uh, within the medium alveolus. That's just another case showing this. As you can see, you have tilt of the talus and subtail instability. As you can see, the calcaneus then interacts with this line again. And that's where I end. I uh, hope you enjoyed the cases.